Quantum Conversations, your portal to the inner realms. Access infinite possibilities, infinite mastery, and infinite love. Mind-expanding, heart-opening conversations with some of the greatest spiritual teachers, luminaries, and healers of today's world. Usher in new earth by living in your sacred heart. Quantum Conversations is brought to you by AcousticHealth.com, home of music from the universe, online healing retreats, and this program. Claim your free registration to daily shows at AcousticHealth.com. AcousticHealth.com, your portal to the inner realms. Our program starts shortly. Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. Welcome to this episode. We are here with Angelic Starseed, the Earth Star Healer, and we are talking about creation magic. This actually comes from a vibration and leaving the older density behind. We're going to talk all about that because truly we are here to create new earth. We are all new earth leaders and we are immaculate with our vibration. So we're going to start with some sound healing. I want to introduce Z Earth Star back to Quantum Conversations. Welcome, Z. Hi, Loren. Hi, everybody. What an absolute joy to be here with everybody today. I'm really excited for all of the energy we'll experience together. Yes. All right. We are in an opportunity in this timeline in the now moment to truly transcend fear. And so as we come into this sacred space today, Z, let's use your sound healing as a tool. This is beautiful music created by Z. And tell us a little bit about this piece that you're going to play for us. Um, well, actually, I have my uh, loop pedal set up, so I'm actually going to be channeling this song live. Um, and my intention is just to connect everybody um, in the field together in a space of love and joy and, and coherence with um, natural uh, resonance of Gaia, which um, right now she's really in a, a space of celebration. I feel like there's a lot of celebrating um, energy in the air because we have been waiting for this moment in the universe for so long. Um, and so there's all of this fear energy that might exist um, in the mass collective consciousness, but I just want to uh, bring through this vibration of Gaia consciousness um, and the vibration of what's actually true um, in resonance with the universe right now. Yes, that's so beautiful. Thank you. All right, so live with Z, live music. Thank you. Oh, 
music of Z Earth Star Healer. That was so high vibrational and angelic. We are feeling the love of our hearts. Thank you so much for that. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a very special live transmission, and it reveals the wizardry, the technical Andromedan wisdom that Z brings forth in her ability to do that performance live. So, Z, there was some stuff going on there. You were... It was repetitive, and you were looping some things. What a fascinating, beautiful presentation with this technology. Thank you. It was so much fun. I love how you said wizardry. (laughs) It is. It's wizardry. I didn't think of that until I actually said it. (laughs) Thank you, Andromedans. Uh, What's going on? That was beautiful. Very cool. Yeah, so this is something that is new that's coming in. Obviously, we all know that sound is so powerful, and there's just something about the um, sound resonance that can really bring us into different realities and journeys. Um, So just maybe a few months ago, um, I had a benefactor come in and help me acquire all the technology, and this is only like, you know, 15% of it. This is just the looper um, with the mic. The rest of my gear I couldn't set up yet because I'm building a house and there's not enough room for it. But um, I basically got this synthesizer, um, and when I got it, the Hathors came, and they said that this, this specific synthesizer is basically capable of making any sound vibration imaginable um, because it's got, like, 30 knobs that control the very specific qualities of different dimensions of the sound. Um, and they basically... My whole house started shaking when they came, and I heard this really deep drone sound. It was like, you know, kind of if you could imagine a spaceship lifting off or something, you know, this deep sound. Mm. And the whole house was shaking, and the Hathors were like, you know, this is what you're going to be creating. And I could feel the sound vibration literally recoding my DNA and opening portals. And, I mean, this is um what the Hathor people were doing back in the height of the Egyptian uh, Egyptian days, we would be opening stargates with sound. So I'm definitely still at the very beginning of uh, this kind of sound alchemy and learning about how to do this. Um, so I'm really excited to bring you along on this journey that I'm on. Um, and I think that, you know, that just is one slice of us really beginning to even open up our window to seeing what new earth is going to be like you know it's kind of been this secret or something that we're whispering about for so long and i feel like 2020 we're really opening the door and and just being like wow you know all of this possibility is there that we didn't have room to even look at before so i'm so excited to explore all of that um, with you guys today Yes, very cool indeed. Thank you. And it is exciting. Um, You know, we've been talking a lot lately about things as different areas around our nation and other parts of the world kind of come laying low for a while uh, as people hunker down. Um, We need to really look at what we could do instead of going and doing something else out there if our lives have been changed or uh, moved in a different direction. That is our higher self speaking to us. And what a beautiful time to play with the tools that you just received or any of us to go inward a little bit more deeply and then create some new things and learn, maybe take some learning curves on programs and things that make our lives easier in bringing our service work about. So it is beautiful, um, and your music is just exquisite. Thank you. We get um, comments coming in that your music transports us to another world. Absolutely. <laughs> and I love that the Hathars are with you. Um and it it just felt very angelic, the music um, that you created there. And you know what, Z, I 
we could have listened to that this whole session. It could have gone <laughs> on and on and on. So keep that in mind because I know you bring this into all of the workshops and things that you do, and we just love it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And actually, it's definitely something that is growing. Um, I started singing with the help of the plant medicine, ayahuasca. And I actually studied classical piano. That was what I studied in university. Um, but, you know, it was very regimented and classical mm-hmm. in this way. And I, um, how I came into singing is actually, I think it was 2016. 2016, in the beginning of this year, was when I first opened my eyes to um, some of the very tragic things that had occurred on this planet, namely, you know, elite um, child trafficking and that kind of level of darkness. Um, And my guides told me that they waited as long as they could to tell me these things, um, you know, because even as I was growing up, I knew there was something dark and weird about, you know, the way things were set up in the world. But I wasn't clear about, you know, what forces were controlling Um, everybody and so on and so forth and so they waited till I was 22 to lay this heaviness on me and at the time I kind of went into this um, immediate a state of almost defeat being like holy crap you know that's terrible how who could ever um, do these things to children and so on so I, I asked spirit and my higher self you know what can I do about it because I didn't feel like you know starting an army crew and going out and literally busting down doors to rescue children was exactly my role um, and I but I definitely was very motivated to do something about it so I communicated very strongly with that energy hey I would really like to help I really want to know what I can do So that night I had this dream where I was almost in this dungeon where some nasty things had happened. And I was singing these songs and I was watching the sound waves reverberate off of the walls and in all these different dimensions of time space. And it was restoring and healing and clearing all of the um, energies of trauma and separation, um, even, you know, darker demonic energies out of the space. And when I woke up that morning... I received an invitation to an ayahuasca ceremony that was close to where I was living in Toronto, Canada, of all places. So I ended up going to the ceremony, and nobody else showed up. It was just me and the the healer, Um, and that ended up being a very extremely intense ceremony during which um, I actually came face-to-face with, you know, one of these um, elite cabal child traffickers, but I won't go into that story. But basically, the the medicine man said, hey, would you like to sing a song? And I never sang songs like this before, but I just felt this energy come down into my body, and I just started singing the most beautiful song. I started crying, and I could feel the love and the alchemy that was inside the transmission. Um, And that's when I first started singing. And now, um, after training with, I, I ended up studying with that medicine person for a year, um, and during which time I really deeply connected with the spirit of, um, of ayahuasca and just learned a lot about how this medicine is often misused in our world and a lot of um, even sorcerers were using it to gain power and all of these things. And there's just a very convoluted situation. But at the same time, the technology itself, um, it was revealed that you know, the angelics and galactics actually brought ayahuasca here to this planet, um, both as a healing uh, tool, technology, and also as a way of accessing um, collective and planetary libraries of information. So I actually discovered that I was on the team that co-created this plant as a technology for us to use. And then after that time, I basically was um, pulled away from actually using the the plant itself. And then what started happening was that plant had fused itself with my energy body, and I started channeling um, the vibration of the medicine. And Mm -hmm. so when I am facilitating these healing circles, which I do online, um, these um, I call them oracle medicine ceremonies. It's kind of like the main form of, um, sharing that I'm doing right now is I'm moving away from, you know, private sessions and moving into more effective group healing situations. And these ceremonies, I'm actually 
um, working with the spirit of the plant and the DNA of the technology, which is very deeply um, ingrained in myself. Actually, my birth name literally means healing medicinal tea. Um, so my dad read oh. an astrology book for three days yeah. before he named me um, mm-hmm. and decided that my name was fragrant medicinal tea. So I literally <laughs> started channeling this medicine in these oracle medicine ceremonies and people are actually, you know, having full on purges, like throwing up and crying and moving through these beautiful journeys. They're actually having a similar journey to a plant medicine experience, except it's not as harsh and scary because sometimes in a, a really intense ayahuasca ceremony, we can lose sense of ourselves and it could be really scary and, you know, other forces can come in because we're so discombobulated because we're so affected by the medicine. Um, so a lot of this is what's new that's coming in is very exciting. I really feel like um, it's almost the future because we're learning how to engage with plants on a vibrational level um, and knowing that we can experience these things on a vibrational level. And that just says so much about, you know, all the other things that we can experience vibrationally as well. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, I love that. Um, it just brings to mind all the beautiful connections. Plants always are here to assist us. It's so wonderful whether we use the oils and, and uh, sacred scents and sprays or we ingest them or even listen to the music. We've been doing a lot with plant music lately. Right, okay. I love that. Yeah, I know. It's so lovely. It's just a beautiful um, world, and it's going to get better. This is why we always say hold our vision of new earth, always, and that means we will work and um, make choices that actually anchor it in and bring it in. So let's talk about today's session and we're talking about creation magic um this Mm -hmm. is really like a vibration as well talk about vibration Mm -hmm. um and so i think one of the questions that will assist those who are transcending fear looking at fear triggers there's some fear being triggered um we can thank the false matrix for that right because it's showing us certain things about ourselves. What do you think about this um, and the the great opportunity that's here for us? Yeah, so currently in the world, of course, the big thing is this virus that apparently is going around. And I was able to just um, pull in some codes um, just an hour ago about this. So I believe that uh, when we are in a certain frequency, when we are living and embodied in a certain frequency, then we are in a certain realm, we're in a reality. And in that reality, if we're oscillating with the frequencies of life, then um, disease actually can't exist. And this is something that I practice in myself for very many years now because it's kind of an intuitive knowing, right? I think a lot of us feel this way, um, that, you know, when we have... um, a good resonance with the field, the organic living field of life, and we're in, you know, a high vibration. And a high vibration just means, you know, we're content, we're happy, we're not running away from any part of ourselves. There's no internal conflict. Um, there's peace. Um, there's contentment. Um, so when we're in that place, um, our bodies are actually resonating in the frequency of being alive and appreciating life. And in that frequency. Um, diseases can't actually exist. Um, And so I know that in a lot of traditional um, medical systems, they talk about how um, every organ is interrelated and everything is interrelated and how many diseases come about through um, our emotions or emotional blockages and things like that. You know, this is like pretty common knowledge by this point in our uh, collective growth. So... I feel like what's happening with this virus is that, first of all, there are just about 50 different reasons why it's here. Um, I feel like spirit is very creative, and I feel like spirit doesn't waste any time. So anytime Mm -hmm. like I have a major event happen in my life, I'll start seeing how that one event is actually affecting and influencing, like, 
six different timelines or people. Timelines. Mm-hmm. At the same time. Mm-hmm. So by that, I just mean like, say like, you know, um, I'm walking down a grocery store and then my cart bumps into somebody else. Mm-hmm. Now, in that moment, I'm perceiving that, you know, this is a very singular event of my cart bumping into somebody, but in the actual reality, if we're aware of everything that's happening in the universe, which we can't possibly with our brain, um, we'll notice that, you know, we saw that person that we bumped into, and then that led to this other event, and then that catalyzes other events. So that simple event of me bumping my cart into that guy actually had, you know, 50 different intentions of why the universe made that happen. Mm-hmm. I feel the same way the same way with this virus where you know there's a lot of different perceptions about it and I think oftentimes all of those perceptions are true and that what we can gain from it is actually just you know like you were saying a real check in about where we are you know if we're really feeling afraid or if we're really trusting in ourselves um, and our devotion and resonance and connection with life as I was saying um earlier today as well that Um, The root of all of this, if there is fear, is the fear of death, right? Um, If there's a fear of lack, then ultimately it's actually the fear of death because if you fear you're lacking, then you're not going to get food and then you're going to die. Like that's kind of the train of the fear. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So this fear itself comes from our collective separation from life Um, because the when the false matrix was created or whatever, the only way that it could get people to function in that resonance is to chop off our roots, chop off our tail, our connection to the organic living systems. Because people that believe and understand and know that we're infinitely abundant, which is the truth, people that know that won't fall for, you know, um, these tricks. Of the false matrix, obviously. So in order to trick people into um, co-creating the false matrix, they had to first trick people into believing that there is lack. And so when there is lack, then there is fear. And this lack is also created by um, basically the collective suppression of our creative and sexual energy. So I want to explain this because this ties right into the creation magic because um, the creation magic is basically what my ancestors and my guys are asking me to call or put a name to how our physical vessel is designed to be creator beings and how our physical vessel process universal energy to transform it into any creation we desire. So essentially this is talking about our blueprint as a human being and how our human beingness um, fit into the planetary ecosystem and thus the universal ecosystem. And this is um, kind of something that has been uh, kind of hidden from us for a long time. Um, But actually, I feel like this whole experience with the false matrix has taught us about responsibility, right? Um, it's kind of almost like training wheels or we're going through a school where you, if um, we're infinite creator angelic beings, which we all are, we're all of the same angelic consciousness. Um, if our oneness decided that we wanted to exist in physicality and that we would um, experience being individual beings, so this is a very exciting experience that we can have, um, then we couldn't possibly just hand ourselves all the power all at once. So we had to create certain experiences over time that would teach us about certain things like value and morals and patience and all of these um, virtues. So um, this is kind of just the progression of evolution where, you know, we went from cave people that really were just learning about, um, Combustion is what they're calling it, like transformation of matter. Um, We're just learning about, like, you know, how energy exchanges and how we fit into the ecosystem and how we exist in this living world. We were very much um, in a state of tactile learning in that time. 
And then we move into, you know, um, this phase where we're learning about, you know, pure physical manipulation of the material realm. Um, and at the same time that we were experiencing inside that separation, we were learning about pain and suffering. Now, do I feel like there were certain beings that took advantage of that period of learning that we had? Yes, I do feel like um, while this period of time um, in darkness was sanctioned and intentioned, there were some beings that got a little bit too comfortable with their power um, in their role in that part of our collective evolution. And certain things happen that were against cosmic law. So both of those things are true. Both of those things occurred. But now, you know, we are moving out of that phase. We are creating a, uh, basically, when um, new phases of evolution starts to happen, there is a pulse of energy that moves through, through the ley line system, um, through our local solar system, and through the universe as well. So this is how our higher selves, our angelic parts of our self, pulse for evolutionary stages to end and um, begin in the physical reality. So some people are aware of this as solar flares. Um, other people have seen the sun, you know, do different things or they um, are seeing different frequencies of light come in or people call it, you know, the new ley line system. So um, the ley line system is a system of energy that is connected to all of consciousness on this planet and it is used to impulse evolutionary um, stages. So, you know, when we hear about the new grid and the solar flares, all of these are physical um, expressions of this new evolutionary pulse that's coming into the planet. So we are becoming a new um, species where we're moving into the next stage of our um, human embodiment, our human existence. So now we're learning about the original intention of who we were meant to be when we were created, which is to be a physical, divine, creator being, um, angelic consciousness embodied in a physical body that we're calling a human body. And this human body is not just physical, like there's fingers and organs. There's also an energy system and also its own ley line system inside the body, which, you know, many people know as the chakra system. And there's all different kinds of chakra systems. And I'm sure they all exist on some level. Nothing is in conflict. But the specific um, energy system that my guides are taking on and sharing about is the three Dantians, which for people who practice Qigong understand that the three Dantians are basically the three energy centers. One is around the head area, the crown, and one is around the heart and the throat, and one is the lower Dantian, which is below the belly button in the sacral area. Um, so together, this system is basically what my guidance system is referring to as the human body's um, mechanics of creation, um, how we can draw upon universal energy and give birth and create physical and non-physical things, and that it's actually quite a mechanical process um, that we're all capable of doing because we were designed with this feature in our body for a reason, because we're divine creator beings. Um, so... Basically, then, we're talking about how and w how our physical body, how our being, our divine creator beingness fit into the planetary and universal existence and how we can access that power through working with these um, energy centers consciously. And this is very interesting because I feel like for a long time, a lot of light workers have just been kind of you know, working energetically with the field, raising the vibration of the planet and doing a lot of energy work, maybe traveling and doing grid work. But we haven't really been able to anchor um, big foundational um, shifts in the physical reality. For example, you know, big healing centers that are in the vibration of angelic consciousness and, you know, have, you know, our 
Starseed Foundational Banks, which we can just give out grants for star seeds to travel and to learn. Um, these are the kinds of things that we are stepping into doing through the mastery of this um, wave of light workers and star seeds. So I'm receiving a lot of this information from actually my daughter, who is um, currently still inside my body. <laughs> she is due in May. But um, I've been working with her for uh, since before she was conceived, but really the last three months she's been very present. And um, through connecting with her and seeing, you know, what her generation are here to do and experience kind of puts my role in perspective. So, for example, um, and this is just like an exercise of uh, our imagination, and those of you who really resonate with what I'm about to say, please reach out. Um, you know, either just email me or just share with me, you know, these dreams and visions because we're really at this time when these things are coming into physical manifestation. And I feel like that is why the creation magic teachings are coming in right now is to support the anchoring and the materialization of these dreams. So, um, first one is having a massive foundation where we have um, a large amount of money to fund starseed missions. So I feel like it's not my daughter's generation's job to interact with the false matrix. Um, her job is to come in and anchor the new. So I feel like, um, and actually I felt like this project has been kind of um, in limbo, let's say, like, it's been kind of hard to get to this point, and so I'm really happy that we're here because it takes a lot, a high level of mastery to be able to manipulate and exist in multiple realms at once, truly. So for our, this wave, so I'm talking about maybe, you know, people who are my age and also people who are in their 40s and 50s who are still active in their light work, who are not retired. Um, however, you know, age that you are, that you're still actively participating, that is our job to come into a place of energy mastery that we're able to manifest abundance and large amounts of resources um, to create foundations for the future generation. So that, yes. for example, if my, if somebody who is 15 right now, they're a starseed and they're just waking up. Um, if they could be provided the environment for them to wake up fully, if they could be provided the education that they needed um, and the support, really, that they needed, and even the money that they could use to travel to sacred sites and to remember who they are, you know, this will greatly accelerate our collective mission. And it's been kind of hard for us to access this level of co-creation, but we're really moving into that now. Um, and of course, you know, this is really encouraging the older wave of star beings to come into mastery and because the manifestation of money shouldn't be hard. And it is hard because, you know, we, we're actually fighting and clearing out all of these programs and viral consciousness in our bodies that keep us from accessing that level of abundance. So it's no longer just because, you know, you want to have financial freedom is actually kind of a co-collaborative and intergenerational star being operation that we need you to be functioning in a state of mastery in your creational body. Um, and so this is um, kind of a segue into um, talking about our energy body and how it functions. Um, yeah, I'll take a break there, you know, if you wanted to come in. And... Well, yes, thank you for that. Beautiful. We're getting close to that. I know many have big dreams and new earth visions, and we are going to be seeing a change. Like right now, it feels like our collective is clearing the fear programs 
um, in their ancestral DNA lineage as well as past lives or other lives. And so Mm -hmm. when this is done, the inspiration comes in anew. That's the beauty of clearing this stuff out and helping others clear it out too. And, you know, I had a dream once. Z, one of my new earth visions, and it doesn't even have to be a new earth vision. It's something for every high school student, and that is go overseas to sacred sites or just overseas to different cultures and communities because you can see the world from a very different place. So when you talk about this massive foundation, um, it is possible. So thank you for dreaming that. And I know others are working on their dreams too. And isn't it beautiful that platforms like Kickstarter and crowdfunding are coming about. So it's beautiful. This is coming about. So yes, let's go back to this state of mastery that we are being asked to step into. And we're going to talk about the energy body. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll just share about, you know, my own creative process. I have been living out in the forest uh, since July last year. So it's almost been a year and um, we're about an hour and a half away from the small city, two and a half hours away from the large city where we go once a month for, you know, necessity shopping. But for the most part, we're just out here in the forest. Um, I often spend days without putting clothes on. And I just say that because <laughs> I've been really working on getting back in resonance and shedding the false matrix in every possible way I can. You're a real um, wild I've... child, wild child, wild <laughs> child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what I've come to realize is that, you know, when I am in the city sometimes in, um, years ago, you know, there are all of these um, different uh, parts of the reality that would actively shut my creativity down, like just being a woman or being young, a young woman and having you know, random weird sexual advances by random people, like just not even being able to be myself um, and having to constantly stifle and shut down my creative energy or my sexual energy just so I can protect myself. And that is the state that we're in collectively, the majority of humanity are in, right? So as I'm living out here in the forest, just pretty much by myself, my beloved, who's very beautiful and kind and loving being, um, and just being able to, you know, be free. And, you know, when obviously when I'm running around the forest naked, it's not like, you know, this sexual thing or anything. I'm literally just like free. And to be able to have our energy system free has kind of reset my um, creative energy system. So I have been studying these three energy centers for a while now. I've been training with my Taoist ancestors in the dream time. Um, And basically, um, there is a streamlined process of creativity where we're supposed to dream of something or become inspired by something or intellectually come up with something and then feel in our heart how aligned and purposeful and that purpose and love actually motivates that motor to turn on. And then our sexual raw creative energy is supposed to come in and kind of pull us into um, creating it and and it will be birthed into the world. So there's not really supposed to be any lag time, you know, where we're like, oh, I want to create a healing center. And then we're like, oh, the money's not here. And like, you know, it's just like kind of stalling. And so that stalling energy is actually symbolizes that there is a blockage in the energy system. Um, because what is supposed to happen when our energy system is aligned is that we have this brilliant idea, we feel this motivation in our heart, our sexual energy comes online, and literally we're supposed to be in a place of orgasmic um, pleasure in our physical body. We're designed to be in pleasure when we're creating. And so for me, for example, I've wanted to write these books and I've wanted to create this healing center for a long, long time like five, six years. And only in the last year have I actually felt like it's been easy. Like the latest book that just came out, I basically wrote that in like a couple months. And the whole time I was writing, I was sexually aroused and wet and I was feeling that um, love and the purpose 
all of those energies are woven into the creation. That is how we're supposed to feel. Obviously, if you look around in our society, it's very, we're very far away from that. And actually, all of the tactics like the pornography and the sexual degradation has been a tactic, a tactic to take away our creative powers. Um, because when we're separated from our um, abilities to create, then we won't be able to create a new world. Then we'll be under their control forever. You know, you can't make slaves out of divine creator beings. So you got to trick the divine creator beings into believing that that's not what they are. That's basically, you know, the false matrix wrapped up. Um, so as we're waking up, we're remembering that we are divine creator beings and that we actually literally create with our creative energy. And we experience that in the 3D as sexual energy, but that's actually only one of our three creational centers. So a lot of law of attraction teachings say, you know, we got to visualize what we want. And then, you know, some of them actually do say that you have to feel that you have it. And that's kind of touching on this whole um, embodied creation thing. But even still, um, I feel like that is a incomplete um, teaching of creation um, because, first of all, it's teaching you that, you know, some force outside of you is bringing it to you. So it's not like you're creating it. And second of all, it's not teaching us to be aligned in our heart. So the three creational energy centers are our crown and third eye. And this is a center where we receive our inspiration and also our dreams and our guidance from our higher self and our team, but also our imagination. Um, and it's when those, all of those energies work together that we come to creations that are authentic and unique. Um, that when this center is in alignment, we are actually in a place of free creation Whereas if there are um, distortions, for example, belief systems um, that say like uh, the only way to become a healer is if you go to university and study for six years and then, you know, work really hard um, and, you know, abandon your value system and lie to a bunch of people. <laughs> so that's, you know, um, when somebody is creating a life of becoming a doctor, those are the distortions that can exist in our belief system. It's just an example. So there's obviously 80 billion other things that could be in that center that is blocking our full access of, again, our inspiration um, and our imagination. Um, and we can see how this center is being hijacked through in our children, through um, the video games, and all sorts of stuff, and even the education system, right? It's uh... anyway. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. <laughs> we go to the second center of creation, which is our heart. So in our heart, this is actually our center of motivation. So when this center is in alignment and active in our creative process, when we have an inspiration or an idea, um, we decide if that's something that we're going to give birth to. Um, it's kind of almost like our head is like the, we're receiving like, you know, cosmic sperms of information or ideas. Um, for example, you might think, oh, it'd be cool to create this kitchen gadget that I just imagined. Um, but you might have like 80 of those ideas a day and you don't have to, you know, incubate all of those ideas into reality. So this is when we tune into our heart um, and feel about our motivation. So we want to build this project, this foundation. How excited does that make our heart? How on purpose does that make us feel? How much love do we feel that's going to flow into the world? This is a very powerful force of creation. This is what actually pulls us, pulls that idea down, begins to pull that those ideas down through the realms into physical manifestation. So if our heart is aligned with the timeline reality that we've been inspired by, then this is actually when our engine can turn on. Our sexual energy can come in and carry that creation to full term. So let's take an example of a, um, for somebody who 
in the in the law of attraction teachings, there's a lot of people saying like, oh, you can manifest a mansion or, you know, this really fancy car. Well, when you tune into your heart, you know, most people probably aren't actually that in love or in reverence or um, um, purposefully passionate about those things. And so when they create, then they're playing with um, actually, you know, distorted magic, basically. Um, so then when we move into the third, oh, actually, let's talk about, you know, a possible blockage in the heart center. Um, it's like, just for example, if you have this idea, like you are um, in love with somebody and you see them with somebody else and you want to create this reality where you're with that person. Um, and obviously this is like uh, uh, a distorted motivation um, because it's out of, you know, possession and ownership and jealousy and so on and so forth. Or if you, again, want to create like a big fancy house for yourself, it's not really aligned with, you know, being of service and being in resonance with love and things like that. So this is a good place. Most light workers don't really have issues with that, with this center and being in alignment. Um, I guess one of the things is like if you do, if we're doing something just to make money, that is also a distortion in our center of motivation. Um, so good places to check in with ourselves in our creative process. And then finally, we get to the sexual energy center. And this is actually the main reason why people are not manifesting the abundance and um, the stability and the money that they want. Um, we understand that in this world still, we do still need money to make certain things happen. Um, and so there are certain belief systems that are stored here that say, you know, money is evil and that money is bad and we hate money. Money is the reason why everything is a shithole and blah, blah, blah. Of course, you know, any sort of sexual shame and guilt, any level of uh, resistance or repression of sexual energy is basically the repression of our creative energy. So you might have a lot of ideas and if you are not able to actually pull them through, this the reason is probably down here in our root and sacral chakras. Um, so, um, I don't know if there's any questions about this. It's pretty straightforward. In um, the master class that I'll be hosting at the end of the month, which is a special offer that is um, on this talk thing on <laughs> Lauren's website, Stig Health. Um, at the end of the month, we're doing a three-day master class where we basically go through all the possible distortions in these energy systems um, and as well talk about the process of starseed or lightworker activation and embodiment um, because there's a lot of traps in the New Age community um, as well that are meant to glass the ceiling people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we talk a lot about that. Basically, the intention is to pull you all the way through your root chakra so that you can actually make things happen in the physical reality. Um, and it's a three-day master class where we go through these distortions. And then on the third day, we do an oracle medicine ceremony where we're actually ripping these belief systems and distortions out and learning how to work with this energy um, to really sink into the root chakra which is uh, kind of the place of initiation for all of us right now. Like, can we mm -hmm. actually embody all of these understandings and knowings that we've been thinking about and understanding for such a long time? Like, for example, we are infinite creators. Like, we believe this, right? We are infinite, and we are infinite creator beings. Well, if we actually believe this, then we would have access to infinite resources, too. That's how that knowing and belief system would translate into this physical reality. So if you're saying, I'm an infinite creator, but that's not showing up in your life, then somewhere inside the energy system, there's a conflict that's not allowing that reality to be materialized. And obviously, I'm still in the process of this happening. I'm just noticing that, I'm noticing direct correlations between these practices that I'm doing and how, um, 
things are manifesting in my life as I'm saying that, you know, because I live so far out into the forest, um, in order to manifest things, you really do everything alchemically first. <laughs> There's no, you know, synchronicities and going outside for a walk and meeting people. There's none of that. It's just me in the forest, my energy system, and literally alchemically pulling energy in and pulling manifestations or just creating things. And so this is the system that I have been practicing and it's been really magical what has been happening. And so I feel like this teachings and this energy is really coming in to support those light workers who have been really healing and doing their work for a while, for a long time. And it's just like, why is the money not here? Like, why is this thing I'm trying to create not here? Um, probably the root chakra. And we're going to really address that and the different ways um, that those traumas might be interfering with your creative process. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that. Um, that is available actually on this webpage. You can check that out. Well, thank you for doing this course because we really are feeling, um, you know, especially if we're empathic, we feel this and we just simply cannot take this with us. So to do this um, work and clearing, it is essential. Now, you mentioned that you do everything alchemically first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you elaborate a little bit more on that? You know, you're walking, you're, it's like really connected to nature. I love that. And we can all connect in with nature, right? Um, you are fortunate living right now out there in the deep of it, yet we can still um, get in with it, right? Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So you might think that, you know, I'm really lucky and whatnot, but it hasn't really been the easiest because I lived, like many of you, in the false matrix my entire life. So there were programs and systems in my body that were, you know, addicted to certain things in the false matrix. And there's nothing to be ashamed about um, because that's just, you know, the reality that I grew up and lived in for so long that all my ancestors lived inside for so long and so it's really been a really intense process of purging um, because none of that um, none of the um, let's say how was the word here distractions or stimulation of the false reality is out here um, and I feel like while you know it was really intense it was it ha obviously is very helpful to have an environment that is not distracting and trying to inseminate me with viruses all the time um, because then I'm actually able to shed and dissolve and return to my original state. Now, obviously, this is something that everybody can do, and I recommend that. So when I say I do everything alchemically, I mean, so for example, if I want to create something, um, let's say, um, I guess um, this healing center that I, I'm building on my land would be the first thing. Oh, well, here's a good idea. I am um, organizing kind of a festival in September on my land. Um, and so when I start the process, this idea came in and I knew that it was a um, a divinely inspired idea because I woke up at 3.33 a.m. and I had to like write down all the templates for the schedule and everything. So I know that this is an event that's mm -hmm. in great alignment, but I couldn't jump straight into, you know, making the flyer and inviting people. So these are actions. Um, I can't go straight into doing that because I have to make sure that my energy system is aligned first. So Basically, I check in with the idea and then I check in with my motivation and then I make sure that my root chakra is, you know, fully on board. So I'm not afraid of not selling any tickets. I'm not afraid that I don't have enough money to make it happen. I'm not um, stressed that, you know, whatever else, like all of these little fears and anxieties, they can't exist in my system when I begin to create the thing. Otherwise, I will be creating the fears, right? So I always take a few days of alchemy and alchemizing those energies 
if I'm not feeling fully enlivened by the creation, if I'm not fully feeling aroused and excited and just feeling full of pleasure for the creation, I don't start. And I will just continue to sit with the anxiety um, and dissolving the fears until I do eventually come to this place of feeling arousal and alignment. And then I will tune in to my high guidance and say, okay, what is the first step? And then I will start to create like, you know, usually it's like a flyer or just like sending out an email or something. Um, and this is, of course, to um, sustain the integrity of the creation um, because, you know, at this point in the game, there's just so much out there. There's so much, you know, um, let's say that uh, there's just such um, subtle geometries of energy of the false matrix that can slide into us um, to keep itself going. So, it, for example, if we're inspired to start a healing business, right, um, we need to really tune in with our system of creation before we start creating it because this is really how people get hijacked, right? It's like these little crevices of fear and um, lack and money and fame and, you know, am I good enough, self-worth, like all these little cracks that are possibly in our energy system that might be really small and really subtle. These are the cracks that the false mistress can sneak in and begin to steer you off of your path of organic creation. So, you know, we're really um, coming into these fine, fine, subtle realms of mastery. We're really ensuring, you know, what we're creating is in resonance and connection with the organic. Because that is actually how we create the new world, right? The more people we have in this resonance on the ground creating businesses and sanctuaries and creating physical material things, like pull, pushing, putting an anchor on the ground um, in this right, you know, creational frequency, divine creation, creation magic. Um, we're actually anchoring the new earth, like on the ground, right, to allow more people to kind of move into this frequency of existence. Um, so I would say that this is just the next level of what we're here to do. Um, and what we're doing and to take the level of self-honesty and inquiry and awareness, which is all really fun stuff. <laughs> it's like watching yourself transform and watching that transformation become real things. There's no greater joy than experiencing yourself as a creator being operating within the divine creational mainframe. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, so perfect. Thank you so much, Z. You are magical. You blow my mind, really. Little Angelica Starseed, thank you for this today. I, I would love for you, it's not time yet to say goodbye, but I'd love at the end of our program for you to... Um, do more of your beautiful singing because it's just so high vibrational and it will really set home the information that you shared with us today. Really very cool. Thank you. Mm, absolutely. And I'm saying, you know, this, there's really exciting things unfolding and um, this retreat festival that I'll be organizing in September, I really rec um, recommend anyone who's interested in coming because, um, so it's going to be 111 participants, and the intention is actually to embody our mastery in a way that we basically manifest a miracle together. And for those of you who, um, I'm just going to tell the super abbreviated version of the story of how I came to find this land. Basically, this Andromedan man bought this land in the 2000s, and then he passed away March of 2013. This is actually the exact month that I woke up and started communicating with an Andromedan male guide. Wow. And over two years, um, he basically led me to this land. And he, before he died, told his team that he was going to 
um, that this little Chinese girl who's an Andromedan starseed was going to show up one day and that this land was meant for her. So mm. when I showed up in 2015, they're like, oh, my God, you're actually here. And so I've been visiting wow. this land. There is a stargate close by, and the land desires to be like a Hogwarts, basically. Um, and it's not a Hogwarts where there are, like, our teachers and students, but more like a Hogwarts where we're all – it's just a space which nourishes our connection with ourselves and the earth, right? There are – Always, you know, beings who are ahead of us or in the future of us in certain things. And we can always teach and learn from each other. But really, it's about our self-guiding ourselves and guiding each other through the process of remembering what being on Earth really is like. So our first mission for this land, when I was moving here um, back in September, I was having a communication with her, just letting her know that I was coming um, you know, hey, I'm I'm really excited. I'm honored that you're gonna have me come live with you full time. I'm so excited to be with you. And she told me that we are going to be pulling water out of the ground. Um, that she desires to have running water on her, and that we will be doing these ceremonies and prayer, and we're gonna pray water from from deep under the ground so that the creeks can run again on the land. And then five minutes after this, <laughs> my land steward called me and said, oh, my goodness, our, our well driller just got stolen. It literally disappeared. And you guys, this is like a well driller. It's huge, right? It's like a giant semi, you know, truck size thing. It don't just like disappear. <laughs> Somebody will have really worked hard to get that thing off the land. So I obviously knew that the land was communicating very loudly that, um, we were not going to drill her for a mm. well. We're going to mm-hmm. actually be calling water out. And this is one of the um, experiences that we're going to do together during the festival is inviting everyone to bring their magic. Like, yes, we've been saying we're a mermaid, we're a fairy, we're connected to, you know, Sirius and Andromeda. Well, you know, what is it actually like if we were in an environment which allows us to be just that, which believes that we are that, which then, you know, allows us to actually remember how that feels like when we are literally working with the earth and water elementals, knowing that we can communicate with earth in this deep, reverent and profound way and helping each other, you know, remember what that feels like. Um, So really... This event, um, I think one of the best um, testimonials we got from last year's event was that this person said they felt like it was the first place that they felt like all of themselves could show up at. And I feel like that's really powerful because, you know, we each have so many dimensions of ourselves that don't always get the environment to express ourselves in. Um, And so having this Space to fully explore and run around the forest as our true form and have, you know, the support around us um, to move through the difficult feelings that are keeping us from experiencing that is really kind of the experience that is desiring to come through. So the information for that is not online yet. I'll be um, working on that the next uh, week or two, but um, definitely, you know, um, sign up for my email list if you are wanting to um, be in the loop about that. We're so excited. Oh, thank you for that. And actually, you guys, if you really want the experience with Z, take her Mastery Empowerment course. So that will, uh, you know, the Oracle Musical Medicine at the end is something that we're going to experience again in a few moments. Um, and really cool, your story. That is so cool um, and just so special and magic. And I want to share Melissa's comment in our Q&A box because she has dreamed like living like you, Z. <laughs> and she gets tears just thinking about it. So um, what I want to stress, not stress, but illustrate is that you show us what's possible and that's beautiful. And when we look around at um, things coming forward, um, new earth coming forward with healing centers, 
um, it shows us what's possible. So let's not see any of that as someone else doing it so we don't do it, but it's a reminder that, yes, it can be done. So I want to say that because, Melissa, you can totally make your healing center um, if that is still a dream of yours. So beautiful. Um, thanks for sharing as well. This is an amazing call. And we have Caroline saying this is exactly what I needed. Thank you times a million stars. All right. That's cool. We know that this is when, when it rings true and resonates in this way. Um, that's our higher self indicating to us the truth. So really cool. Um, you, so did you say this land is in New Mexico? Yep. Mm -hmm. We're about two and a half hours west of Albuquerque and four and a half hours east of Sedona. And I actually met up with Sandra Walters um, last new moon and also last year. And she told me that this is one of her favorite places in the world and that um, it's a, it's got very strong hidden galactic energy and that she believes in 10 years is going to be um, as powerful of a uh, a site as Sedona, which I totally understand because actually we are building the Stargate here and that's part of the experience um, mm. that we'll be sharing. Yes. All right. That is so cool. Okay. Well, Z, thank you so much for this conversation, for helping us <laughs> with our vibration and just holding us in the space, sharing your journey and your story, and then helping us with it, too. You are a guide for us. Thank you for stepping into your starseed role. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Loren. It's really a yeah. joy. And, you know, this um, I'm, I'm going on maternity leave, um, and I won't be doing any sessions until um, pretty much until October. So if you're feeling drawn to working with me, this is kind of like the experience and the container and I know that just from the amount of preparation that we've been having that it's going to be a really powerful experience so if you're feeling interested in coming along for the ride I definitely recommend in getting that um, ticket to master class at the end of the month Yes, online with recordings of course everything is recorded Beautiful experience. Join live or listen to the recordings. All of that is encoded. We are literally creating energy fields from the group energy, and you can connect into that no matter where you are. And I love it because where we are across the planet, we're scattered everywhere, and yet we're like acupuncture points in the planet. So doing this work together literally uh, assists the communities that we're in and now we can all understand why it is we're in the locations that we are and isn't it beautiful with the technology afforded to us that we can come together in this way it makes me smile so much every time mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. time yep it's amazing when I first heard webinars you know, as I was hearing Gaia's call, Gaia's cry, and I just kept, I was like, how do I help? And I kept hearing webinars, and I couldn't believe it at first, <laughs> but now I see it so clearly, mm -hmm. and this is where everyone listening is a new earth leader. You know that in your heart, and here we are, stepping into it, stepping into our mastery. Z, I want to thank you for this beautiful space today. Can you, oh my gosh, for a few more minutes, um, play some more music? Do you feel up to that? Yeah, I would love to. It's my favorite activity. <laughs> I know, I can tell. And someday you're going to have a webinar where it's just this as a musical experience. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. We'll sponsor Actually, that. At We'll a sponsor it at Acoustic Health. What's that? Okay. I'm down to do a, just a purely sound healing journey. That would be amazing. And that will also be just the third day of the master class. 
Um, usually these mm. journeys are about an hour and a half, two hours. And, you know, some people feel like if they're not there live, then they're not getting as much of the energy. But I will just say that I feel like the most potent feedback that I've gotten back from people are people that are listening to, you know, YouTube replays and whatnot, because if it's an energy or an experience that is meant for you, that your higher self has scheduled for you, then no matter what, you're going to get it. And I've had people tell me that, you know, just listening to the recording, I've had implants cleared out, past lives healed, and, you know, even just like literally throwing up and feeling like they're on ayahuasca. So, um, yeah, definitely don't let the not being able to join in live deter you at all if you're feeling called to the experience because we are already separated kind of by space. And so what is time anyway? <laughs> we are um, streaming. This is a quantum vibrational medicine, um, mm. and it will reach you if it's meant to. Sure. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> and so, Melissa, I want to reach out to you, heart sister, Melissa has had a breakthrough in this session today. She said, this is the first time I have felt really alive since my son died. And he crossed over. His, my son has been sending me messages since he crossed over. And they keep telling me, go southwest New Mexico. Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> oh. And she says, I'm so going to be at your event. I wish my son was alive. He could help pull the water. He was amazing and can communicate with Earth incomplete. He was an angelic star seed. Aw, that's beautiful. I feel like okay. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. Now the package, the package that the the sessions to see you in those webinars that's like having a personal session right yes absolutely it's very potent i will have time to um, reach into individual fields there'll be time for you to say like hey i have this back pain or this specific thing um, individual healings do come through um, and it's actually more potent in a group field like that i find so it's just very efficient um, so yeah if you're feeling like there is some exchange that is ordained between my soul and your soul, um, this is definitely an adequate uh, space for us to exchange. Adequate indeed. Beautiful. All right. Well, again, you guys can access that through the link on this webpage and join Z. What a beautiful experience she sets us up with. And um, for those who are questioning, yes, you... Um, it's 97. Uh, you, there is a two payment option. All right. Well, Z, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's sit back and be wooed out on the musical stream of Z Earth Star Healer. Um, just so I have an idea, how much time should I go for? Uh, you can do what feels right. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um.
This is cooperation. And the plants are here to assist us. And thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart. As we raise our own vibration, we raise the vibration of the planet. This show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love. Access all quantum conversations, special offers from our guests, and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste. Namaste.